And you're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, the segment on the program where we take a look at the day's newspapers and make sense of it. And uh, we've invited Mr. Chris Mwandu, uh, publisher of CKN News. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Nice to be on TV this morning. Good morning. Fantastic. Morning Let's begin with a punch newspaper this morning. The story headline says fuel subsidy rises to 500 billion naira. NNPC rules out price hike. The writer reads, Nigeria should subsidize production, not consumption. Lack of local refining capacity behind persistent subsidy. Steel on oil, oil firms borrowed 130 billion naira from banks in February. And that's the CBN speaking. Financial autonomy. Jusun disagrees as NGF fixes May date. Wiki converses state ownership of minerals and government's royalty. Federal government admits revenues crashing, says Nigeria faces hard times. We see a picture of uh, lawyers here. It's, uh, it says MBA backs Jusun vows to force government's compliance. Two nurses, two others killed and injured, 10 injured in Ogun crashes. Lagos plans establishment of anti-graft agency. Ekiti monarchs abductors demand 20 million naira as anxiety grips family. Oshun hunters engage herdsmen in gunfight, force invaders to flee. Igbo 2023 presidency now a possibility. That's Ohaneze speaking. And a sad story here about two cops and seven others killed as gunmen attack Anambra and Abia police stations. All Those right. are the stories on the Punch newspaper. Now to the Daily Independent. Uh, let's see what we can uh, find uh, over here. It says here, 10 billion naira for airports, billed for concession, raises questions. Stakeholders say plans shrouded in secrecy. Also, our dissenting views can't rob us of 2023 presidency. And that's uh, from Ohanez and Igbo. Slain soldiers, police arrest local government officials and two monarchs in Benue State. Also, gunmen attack police stations in Abia, Anambra, raise vehicles. States lose 40% revenue to COVID-19 pandemic. And that's from the Nigerian Governor's Forum. And also, ESN won't work with the Bubeagu security outfit, says IPOB. INEC reads riot act to parties on violent congresses. We can also find here, governors agree to implement autonomy for state legislature and judiciary in May. It's one of the things that we're going to be talking about on the, on the program this morning. Uh, lastly, Afenifere factions unite for Dumakin's funeral. Those are the big ones on the Daily Independent. Let's now take a look at the Nation newspaper. Gunmen kill policemen in multiple attacks on stations. Buildings and vehicles raised, Titanese freeze, and the federal government says it's terrorism. States, OK, autonomy for judiciary and legislature. Lawyers join judicial workers' protest. The minister here is saying we shan't request to borrow 50 billion naira for sharing. Asu, Sanu, rejects Mackinday's order on Lautech VC. Governors in Algon protest plant deduction of $318 million. And the finance minister has been asked not to issue promissory notes for disowned legal fees. Terrorists dislodge troops in Dikwa, seven killed in Herder's attack. Traditional rulers and council workers detained over killing of soldiers in Benue State. Those are the stories on The Nation this morning. All right, let's see what we can find. The Guardian newspaper uh, comes up next. Pressure on disposable incomes as unemployment doubles. Also this morning, again, twin attacks rock police divisions in Abia and Anambra. We can also find their governor's promise implementation of uh, financial autonomy as Jusun suspends strike. INEC threatens to sanction parties over violent congresses. And three INEC officials die in Borno road crash. Lastly, tension as suspected Fulani heads men invade Oshun community, shoot three. Uh, Mr. Chris Wando, I think w w let's start with, uh, once again, stories from the southeast. Uh, what exactly would you say is going on? Uh, we've heard about these attacks on police stations and police facilities for far too long now. It, it seems to not be ending. What would you say might be going on? 
you very much once again. Uh, personally, it is very amazing that um, the Nigerian police um, are finding it difficult to even defend themselves against um, uh, this. And that is worrisome because the security of life and property internally uh, in Nigeria is supposed to be the responsibility of the police. And um, not that they are not security forces. Uh, but it's becoming so um, worrying that the police <laughs> the protection of life and parties of ordinary Nigerians are not the one um, <clears throat> uh, getting overrun by bandits. And that um, to me is very worrisome. And that's through a, a bigger challenge um, to the new Inspector General of Police acting uh, to be able to do something about it. Um, I, I don't see any reason. Yesterday's attack um, of particular interest to me was the one that um, happened at uh, Opo, um, the zona headquarters of uh, Zone 3, uh, 13 of the Nigeria police. That is the zona headquarters of that region. And <laughs> before, we used to have uh, pockets of attacks on just uh, police stations across uh, the southeast. But now, the fight has been taken to the zona headquarters. No. If it is the zona headquarters of the police is not secure, then you can think of what uh, happened today. And don't forget that also the state command of the police were, was attacked in a way few days ago during yeah. the attack at the uh, does it seem uh, correctional this, facility uh, in a way. Mr. Wando, does it seem like there's certain elements trying to weaken the security architecture in the southeast? Because def definitely that is the whole idea. It's obvious that some people are trying to weaken the security apparatus in the southeast. And that to me is uh, very, very and that's why they need to nip this in the board um, because it's no longer the um, ordinary that, that are not secured. Even the security agencies, from what I had, even policemen are finding it difficult to move around in the southeast. Some don't wear your uniform again, they just put it in line, run and move around until they get to their stations. Even those at their station not even feeling secured. That to me is a very, very tough call. And, um, I believe that all the security agencies should assist the police. Uh, since it seems the police is helpless in this situation, I'm talking about the DSS, the defense, uh, the civil defense corps, um, the Nigeria Army, and all security, uh, NI, and the rest of them to be able to uh, pinpoint those that are behind these attacks. They can't just come into our uh, police stations, attack the place, kill people, release private prisoners, burn vehicles and houses, and just the PRT uh, and not be arrested. That means what? Oh, well. All right, Mr. Owanju, another big story we've seen across the newspapers and we'll be getting into the details later on on the program is about Justin financial autonomy. We know that yesterday the, uh, you know, MBA gathered to do a solidarity walk with Jusun. They went to the National Assembly in Abuja to protest, but security officials shot them out. Also, members of the NBA in Akure Ondo State did the same thing. So we're seeing the NBA here now, you know, chipping in their contribution to say that they support the independence of the judiciary and they're, they're trying to press the governors and force them to make sure that, you know, that works out. I don't know how you interpret this in the light of, you know, the fact that the governors here, Jason, have, you know, fingered the governor saying these, they are the reason why, you know, the independence of the judiciary has not been implemented till now. But what's in a statement from Fire Me saying the governors are not opposed to it and that they're the ones in the first place or they're the reason in the first place while the executive order was even passed? If they were the reason why the order was according to the chairman of the uh, Nigerian Governors Forum, so why not be implemented? That should be the question that should be, the government asks. So that to me is just rhetoric. It's just trying to call all the and, and ask the question is, must Jusun go on strike before the governors have to be able to do what they need? The president has signed the uh, executive um, executive art and um, uh, executive order, and it is expected that uh, the the governor is supposed to begin implementation of those uh, of that order. But the people are in just like uh, we. Uh, the every aspect of our um, political uh, arm should be independent. The executive should be independent from the, uh, from the judiciary, judiciary from the legislature. 
that is what the Nigerian Constitution says. So, it's a particular uh, section of the uh, arm of government try to uh, lord itself over and above the uh, other arm of government. That in this is uh, is unacceptable. And um, it, it, so, it takes just a, a strike across Nigeria and shut down of the courts for weeks now before the governors just uh, take a right to do the needful. And this, to me, is very, very, very challenging. This is very, very challenging because it goes to show that the, the kind of people who have political offices who obviously don't know, they are, don't know what they're supposed to do because mm. they want to take off it. What does it... And my, my problem with that, that uh, we're talking of funding of the judiciary. And I believe that uh, since that executive order has been, uh, has been signed into law by the president, I wonder why the office of the attorney general cannot pay directly into the coffers of judiciary. Um, of course, uh, you know that that of legislation, assembly, uh, the National Assembly, um, have had uh, that kind of autonomy. But this, this same governor are kicking against uh, that, those of the state half assembly, as well as the local government. Uh, how can we continue to go on this out? For well, every single thing, um, every single challenge, you have to go on strike. So it's on strike. Uh, Asun went on strike. Um, the other one, every other is going on. It is only when government see Nigerian test and going on that they have to start to do the needful. That to me is no, is not common. All right. It, it also, you know, shows uh, that um, the governors, you know, seem to want to have a grip on those sectors. Uh, to have you know more control over those sectors you know in their states i guess because we've, we've had this discussion about the local governments for a long long time and even states that don't even con you know conduct uh, local government elections i haven't done that in a long long while um but i also want to you know once again stick with the southeast uh, the esn is in the news this morning on the daily independence saying that they will not work with the Ibubeagu uh, security outfit what's your reaction to that and that's from the ipob actually Well, um, if you know for sure, uh, the ESN is, is not recognized by law. In as much as um, I, I, I support the need for them to be able to participate in, in the current security challenges we have without it, is necessary because if all hands must be on stay, uh, on deck. It's obvious that our security agencies seem to have the capacity and the ability to, be able to handle this. You see what is happening in the Southeast, not only in the Southeast, Northwest, Northeast, the south central, um, north central, south south, and even southwest. But that of, uh, if you know what, uh, that of Amotek uh, has to go through um, uh, serious legal, um, has a serious back, uh, legal bank to be able to operate. Um, I, in my own personal opinion, I, I should think that the south is irrespective, we can throw away the uh, baby with the bad water, um, I, which I was, I am looking forward to seeing governors of the South to be able to have a meeting with ESN, irrespective of whatever the ideology is. If the essence of that security is the common goal of securing the South is then all the stakeholders to be able to have a, a, a handshake and be able to come together to make sure that every, they cannot be working across the board or else they won't be able to achieve anything. So um, ESN should be able to, uh, there's only one government and that, those are the state governments in the East. They cannot do anything without those um, government, but the government also should also move a, a bit further uh, as the federal report be able to accommodate um, the, the areas where they can be of um, immense uh, value to each other. There is no way a bubble can be able to you cannot can be in every inch and crannies of the south is is not so good. They don't have the manpower and capacity, just like um, ESN. So I should say that um, I'm looking forward to have a kind of synergy between them. And then so that they can get this risk, and so that the South East can become. South used to be one of the most uh, peaceful um, region in the, in the whole of Nigeria. But now, it seems that it's taken over from the North East and North West mm. in the area of insecurity, and that is a big challenge to them. Okay, let's talk education now. In Oyo State, we're seeing that the state government and ASU are having quite a face-off. So the state governor, Shay Makinde, had issued an order to the vice-chancellor of the Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Laotech, asking him to step aside. But ASU has, you know, condemned this, saying the state governor has no rights to do that. And that even if he wanted to, you know, issue that step aside order, he should have conferred with the governing council of the school. So this issue now, ASU or your state government, the back and forth is all over the papers here. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Mr. Wandu? 
Yes, um, the state government, Governor Mackinde, is the visitor to the university. And I think he has some rights on that issue, but he should not be using uh, um, You realize what you remember happened at UNI like uh, the last time uh -huh. um, the vice chancellor and the pro chancellor, uh, uh, Barista Babalaki, and all the problems that went to the rest of them at the end of it all. Uh, it was revealed the federal government set up a committee to look at, uh, at those, uh, the allegations leveled against the vice chancellor of the University of Lagos. And later it was out that um, the pro chancellor has to leave. Now we have uh, another question. So uh, I, I believe the uh, government may be this, but they should be able to carry up the university along because at the end of it, they are going to give recommendations. So if we have to be our and it is then that the governor can pick um, out of the choices by the suburbs, not to carry the uh, governor council along. Then, but my question is that there are allegations um, against the uh, the What the government council done? What did they? Well, did they look into those allegations? And what if they did? did they put up an investigation? And if they did, what part of the investigation? So I think that um, there are allegations that the that principle of a of that nature. The government should be up and doing and make that they need it in the board make sure that whatever allegations they are raised against they are investigated and recommendation made to the governor. But if they are not able to do that, then the governor has the prerogative according to the um, constitution establishing the establishing the university. Don't forget this university was a joint university of both Oyo and Oshun State, and it was just recently that it was um, handed over to our states because of the for long they has this big green on funding and the rest of them. But it has now become the sole um, property of the Oyo government. Um, government, sorry. All right. And um, I, I hope that the result, because the students have been at home for long, it's not good for academic activities. Okay, Mr. Wanju, another conflict was seen in the papers, still on the front page of the Nation newspaper. It reads, Governors Algon protests planned deduction of 318 million naira. So we see here that uh, Ike Chuku is, is a Chuku SAN, you know, is saying that he needs to collect the sum of 318 million naira from the Federation account as legal fees to a judgment creditor. He's saying basically that he offered his services, you know, a consultancy and legal services to the 774 local government council in getting refunds of first line chad and the paris club deduction and that he offered his services through a mandate from the chairman of the you know board of trustees association of uh, the local government of nigeria algon so he's asking now for 318 million dollars and that's equivalent to 152 uh, uh million billion 640 uh, uh, billion naira basically you know as legal fees what do you think about this he claimed that president muhammad buhari had since december approved the payment of this money to him uh, but that uh, through you know issuance of promissory notes but that uh, he's yet to be paid that has a huge sum and um, the um uh, the luxuries uh, must be <laughs> waiting for them. But in every issue of this nature, there must be a contract. So definitely a contract must uh, sign, if you understand me. There must have been a contract between him and Argon. And I think um, that if there's a breach, then each of the parties should go to court. It is a court pronouncement. It is not just if, if there is a dispute, it is either go in arbitration, um, there's not a call arbitration, either they do arbitration, if it's also agreed during the course of the contract, or they go for, to the court for interpretation. Yeah, in the dispute here, yeah, each of the cannot tell me what is going to happen. It has to be the court that we have an asset. So I think either Argon or the library will talk. And this on the court pronouncement, this issue should be settled. Um, 300, uh, over 300 million plus, um, and how rich are cons? And when we know what is within the local government, is it not the same as the local government at autonomy and uh, where they've been stifled by funds to even uh, perform their activities? So, uh, for the local government chairman, it's all gone to mm -hmm. how we are going to get uh, over $300 uh, million to be able to pay. But for the council to ask for that, they must have seen their approach that and make sure that they have the capital. But I think the only place that we can get this result is through the pronouncement of the court. So they wow. should go to the high court to get right. the result and whatever I say.
and anyone that is agree and is, is agree with the high court can go off up to the appeal court of appeal and then to the supreme court for final pronouncement on that or Alternatively, they cannot go through that. They should go through arbitration to get it resolved. All right. Mm. Let's um, also throw in one last one from the Daily Independent this morning. And it's talking about uh, states losing 40% of their revenue to the COVID-19 pandemic. It's uh, the Nigerian Governor's Forum uh, saying that there. Um, so I want your, your thoughts on uh, governors' um, internally generated revenue and their inability to improve on the IGR year after year. Uh, do you think that their hands are tied because of the structure and the way that the, the country has been run? Or is it just lack of you know, creativity and innovation that has led to this? Also bear in mind, oh, your state has been praised for increasing its IGR by about 14% um, in the last uh, one year. Yes, we'll be able to lock the answers to get direct um, lack of creativity, the lopsidedness of our situation, um, and the like. But for me, I think we should, the issue of um, a lopsidedness of the constitution is the, the problem. Uh, we are I'm of this of thought that we should have um, a structural system. We are still be able to um, look at the resources within. Don't forget the federal government is the octopus in this uh, in this uh, when it comes to the constitution and um there are areas where it is only an exclusive right of the federal government and also areas where the state and government the uh, federal government have a, a, a joint state uh, when it comes to mining and um, other uh, natural resources on the ground the states don't have um a say on that and i think that is where um, we need to rejig our constitution to, to give them rights. We can go to pre-1960 um, uh, uh, or 19, the first public has to be uh, the regions that give them uh, opportunity to be able to uh, look at resources within the area and uh, um, um, get them um, and also pay certain amounts to the federal uh, system. But that is not what, but that is, does not necessarily mean that. Um, that is what should be the state governments are not the, not the leader of leadership for me also because they are not creative enough. There are so much, there are so many ways they can be able to raise their idea. But they are not the, what they do every month is send their commission of finance to Abuja to go and share um, out of um, whatever we got from um, from uh, oil, from FRS and the customs and the rest of them, which in this case is doing it on a daily basis. Um, the, so we not they cannot continue re, and remain um, going cap in hand every month to Abuja to collect this from because the funds are not even put from it. The government, federal government is borrowing <laughs> at a, an astronomical um, rate. So they don't even have end to, uh, to finance most of their activities. So um, so the governors have to be very very creative. But how, what also how do you get creativity uh, when even the economy is not putting Hmm. Uh, there is no job for people. If you are going to, okay, what areas are you looking at? Enough tax. Are you wow. going to tax people that don't have? When probably we are having one of the highest uh, level of unemployment rates in the whole world. Well, like, aside um, uh... at a point, Nigeria has been declared as the poverty heaven of the world. So you can say that is a very bet. Um, the economic team should be able to. I don't know what they discussed at that governors forum. So it doesn't used to be like this. Um, right. Mr. Wandu. I think one of the things they should be thinking is having a cross fertilization of IR. from other states they are very very creative how they are going about it uh, rather than just um, eating and just drinking tea and the rest of them all right we need they to wrap up really live and see what that state like lagos and other states are doing to be able to uh, uh, to, to, to be fair the the economies of you know all states are not the same lagos you know cannot necessarily compare to you know a KB state or something like that but you know, at the same time, you know, I think I would just quickly say before we go that, you know, there's, there's you know, a, a very, very important conversation on blocking leakages uh, through which funds have been wasted, you know, even on the state level. They're, they're not doing enough of that. And at the same time, they're not investing enough in the, you know, infrastructure, you know, of um, each state to be able to raise more money. But thank you very much, Chris Wandu, for I speaking totally agree with you. Uh, that's why I said that. that you, I, 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 there's no way we can compare rivers. Lagos, Kano, and other states. But also, you come to have an idea. You can be able to cross, uh, you know, uh, look at idea, jig yourself, talk to yourself, 
and see areas of the every state has its own what it can use to be able to raise its age. Every Absolutely. single state in Nigeria has that. So there are some states in the north, what they depend on is rice. If some can look at the agriculture, a state like Benue State has so much a, a stake in agriculture and they can so much money from that. In the north, um, in terms of animal husbandry and the rest of them. Yeah. South right. West, cocoa is still, is still there. In the east, palm, the, uh, the palm, uh, palm oil is there. So I, I think there's so much that they can do. Thank but you very just, much. They are too just Ms. busy. Wanda. All they wait is for Abuja and share the money and wait for the next one. Thank you very much. Uh, we always enjoy speaking with you. Thanks for joining us once again this morning. Yes, good morning. Thank you. All right. All right. So we'll take a break here and bring you stories from the past. Stay with us.